There it is. Ronald's got it. Wayne in Spain. All right. So good morning. It is Friday, June 22nd, 2018. This is your daily Forex trading strategy session. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results, but please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. It's nice to meet you. My name is Wayne. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you very much for being a client. And if you have not yet joined our family, please visit TradersWay.com. At least open up a demo. It takes less than 30 seconds, but you will give us an opportunity to earn your loyalty and respect. In exchange for that, I'm here every single day uh, helping you become a confident, skilled, independently thinking, independently minded, successful, profitable trader focused on the long term. And therefore, it's a symbiotic relationship. Visit tradersway.com today, please. So this will be our last webinar for a while. <laughs> like a month, not, not uh, three weeks. Uh, yeah, and on, onward to Harvard. And I think I mentioned yesterday that they found that my, my elite program is too difficult and they're, they're changing the program. <laughs> I love it. It's too hard. So anyways, that's perfect for me. I love it. It's now been deemed by experts to be too difficult. So that's exactly the right place for me to be. Nice. <laughs> So, anyways, taking a look at WTI. Let's go into the world. Um, Saudi Arabia cut a deal with, uh, with the Russians. Charles says, yeah, but I'm killing it. Well, most of the time. Uh, but, you know, I have to hire tutors and stuff, let me tell you. I have to try hard. It's not easy. Um, but, anyways. Uh, so Saudi Arabia has cut a deal with the Russians, and uh, that's interesting. I guess nobody believes it, and I understand that. Nobody believes it. I, I get that. Okay? I get that. So uh, you would think if they're going to increase oil supply, the oil prices would fall, but mm, I don't mm, mm. So anyways, oil is up. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, you can see here we have it kind of going up off of this pivot down here. And we talked about it going up to the, uh, actually, well, this projects that top. That's off this bottom. But mm, I think, I think, oops, I think the real target's kind of like up into here. Okay. And didn't we talk about this yesterday? Like if it was going to go up, it had to go up off that price. I think that's what our discussion was yesterday, right? Like, if it's going to go up, that's going to do it. It should go up, but if it go, if it does go up, it should go up here, kind of thing. No. No. Well, if I were me, that's what I would have said. No, hang on. Hang on, my friend just had a, his daughter was just born. Congratulations. Name her Wayne. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Anyways, yeah. All right. Life goes on. Life goes on so, so slowly. Um, so that, anyway, so nobody knows what I said yesterday about uh, oil. Cool. Things are happening, though. You know, things are happening. Uh, yeah. Things are happening. I, I think what you see today is something important. Um, uh, I don't know what yet, but it, I just got a, a feeling today like the macros are back. So, uh, I don't know. So, let's look at Euro. Could this possibly be a double bottom? Okay. So how are you going to play it? What's the next move? Oh, you named her Annabelle. That's nice. Annabelle, that's old school. Wesley said, my service. Your service showed a lower low by a few pips, and several others were saying it didn't break. Okay, I don't know what that means. La, la, la. Anyways, uh, 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 do you have a plan for this? Okay. If I were me, I would buy this. And I would take that only to the central. But here we go. Here we go. You ready for this? We are going to break out next week. And we're going to have an outside week next week. And we're going to go to here. Fifteen oh seven. Yeah, that seems about right. Around 15, yeah. You buy at the psych level, right? If you're playing the double bottom, how do you guys play a double bottom? You either buy it at the exact double bottom, which is 115-ish, right? Or, right, break out pullback. So you, here or here, you could be long. But I think I drew all these gray lines yesterday, didn't I? Or the day before? I mean, it might have been two days ago. Right? There's that play. Or there's this play. Right? Depending on your time frame. You're truly skip scalping this sucker. You know, it's kind of like this is kind of what you're looking at. Okay, there's a whole day right there. Wait for London open. Here's day two, right?
Jimmy's in at uh, 1520-ish. Yeah, the only problem with that is I, there, I have an 80-20 rule, and it's not a clearly defined rule, so it's hard for me to explain a lot of the times. But uh, typically, 1520 is a sell if you're a bear, because you're thinking hit the psych level up and then down. And it only reverses if you hit their stops, and then you get this spike move. So if I was a bear, and I know you're a bull, but I'm saying the counter to that, if I was a bear and I thought this was going to make a lower low, I'd probably let it hit the psych level. I'd probably let it come up to 20, and I'd probably sell around 20 with a stop above 50. And that's going to be my sell zone. And as you know, 85% of um, stop losses are or are 35 pips away. So if I sell at 20, my stop at 55 kind of thing, or not mine, most people, 85% of stops are 35 pips away or closer. Okay. Uh, so I know you're saying a double bottom play. Uh, ideally, is what I'm saying, James, is that you're closer to 15 than 15 points. That's most ideal. But I know 15, 20, uh, yeah, you know what? No, it's good. I mean, what am I bitching about? No, it's good, man. You you got it. That's golden. You the man. Well played, sir. That's good. But the, still think about it like, let's say there's a psych level. Hang on. Okay, let's say there's a psych level. Uh, I'm just going to use the arrow to make a straight line. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's a psych level. We'll call it 1.0000. Okay. Big, huge psych level. There we go. On the way down, Bears are looking at lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, right? Lower low. What do you think they're expecting next? Lower high, lower low. And so if this is 1-0, typically you'll find that this is 120. Okay. Where's the next bottom going to be? Zero point eight. That's my eighty twenty rule. Okay. And bulls are going to look at it this way. Okay. So for the trading. You know, you know, for example, there, there's two places to buy this, really. What if you bought, bought this at the psych level, right? Your stock's going to be down here around 75. Okay, so if you're in a 10, right, and your stop's down here at 75. And if you sold here, right? And you're at 95, then your your stop's going to be uh, above at 125, right? Okay. So selling at 120, uh, uh, or, or sorry, buying at 120 makes you vulnerable. Is all I'm saying, based on where you know other people might act or put their stops or do this or do that. Um, but the nice thing is if you buy at 20 here, um, once it gets to this 125 area, it's a spike, right? Okay. Typically, that's what you see. Um, I, 
just sort of, I, I don't have scientific data and stuff, but my feeling having reviewed, you know, my trade history and what works and what doesn't work, um, very often I like to buy at 80, 85, right? And then, it, right, so I'm buying down here, and my stop can still be at 75. But now I have a 10 pip stop, not a 30 pip stop, or 35 or 40 pip stop, right? And all I have to do is get through the psych level, and then it, boom, and I get paid on there. And I feel like, again, I feel, I, I don't know if it's true or not, right? But it, my, my emotional experience, my emotional intelligence, not my intellectual intelligence, but I, I, my emotional intelligence tells me that um, I do better here, okay? And buying up here makes you vulnerable because it, it can just collapse, okay? Now, I understand in, in your situation, James, um, the psych level, or it wasn't actually bouncing at the psych level, it was bouncing near the psych level. So that, that forced you to be a little higher, but still, the, the I think the logic is helpful, okay? Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. But that's why I use um, limit orders and um, OCOs, right? That's why I like that EA where I could set it and forget it and say, well, worst case scenario, I lose 25 pips, but I'm pretty sure it's going to keep going up. Right? So what could make this trade not go up? Yeah, Mickey, I want to get to that. Uh, I said it earlier, I, I have some good feelings about macro. I think we're turning a corner. We've had some downside macro. I think we got some upside macro. So if you're looking to buy the Aussie um, and sell the dollar, and remember, I think when things are good, the dollar's weak. So um, whether it's Aussie dollar you're, you're buying or Aussie yen you're buying, I think we're kind of turning the corner. Now, I don't think it's going to go up, 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 up. But at least I think we've found temporary bottom. Right? Yeah, the dollar's not quite weak yet, um, but we're holding above uh, 1.9 on the 10 year D note yield. Right? <clears throat> but I think, uh, Mickey, if you're looking to buy Aussie dollar, we got to get through the summer. And uh, if anything's going to move, it's usually Aussie. Aussie will move. So it might go up 300 pips, and other things, other majors, let's say, only go up 200 pips. So that kind of thing, but it, I, we will we will have some ebbs and flows. But if things are awesome, it'll ebb and flow, Elliott Wave style, right? It'll go up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 a little more up than down, right? But even then, being summer, I guess instead of using my hand, I should draw it. Even being summer, I would expect like let's say on a four-hour chart over the over the course of you know eight weeks. Uh, even an Aussie dollar could do something like this, right? And this might be, you know, um, June, July, August, if you were kind of smoothing that out. Okay. So, like, 
don't be shocked and don't get up if uh, late July looks like that. <clears throat> okay? But anyways, we'll get to that. We're only talking this. So all I have in front of me is red guitar, three chords, and the truth. The rest is up to you. Wait, whoa, that's Jimi Hendrix. No, um, what I have in front of here is the five and the eight, right? So only two chords. We have a higher high uh, after something that looked predominantly higher high earlier. Okay, that's what should happen if all you had in your life was price action. Okay, and I show you this day after day after day. Look left, drag it right. Boring, 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 boring stuff. Cool. So now what? What could what could make this not happen? What's the risk here? And I mean technically. Technically, not th this is euro dollar. So not don't don't say oil, don't say the the, the the queen, don't say something something. No, but what's the risk? Why? What? Where? Of course, lower low. Why? I'll give you a hint. It's not on the chart. Yeah, some support and resistance, right? Let's add some market support and resistance. Okay. This just gives us price action. Okay. I don't know why that's there. Okay. Insert indicator. And we can just do, let's do the old school one. Let's go old. You want to try monthly? All right. So we added a monthly pivot. Are traders using monthly pivots? Oh, really? Hmm. Seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Are these scalping points like we covered yesterday? Or swing points, right. But yesterday we were talking about dropping down an OCO. Could I do a 2550? Could I do a 1530? 2040? 2060? Yeah, putts. 2525, you can do that all day. 25-25 is interesting because it's typically half a, an average daily range. So you're, you're probably not going to get unlucky. For you to lose money, you just simply have to be wrong. But you're only getting a one for one. But you're like, yeah, but if I'm buying in an uptrend, the only time I'm wrong with that kind of OCO is when the market actually reverses. Other than that, the trend takes care of this itself. It's not going to make a lower low if it's an uptrend. I mean, it's just definitional. So it's going to go up almost always. So as long as I buy support in an uptrend, I'm almost always going to do all right. Right? I'm almost always going to 
not lose money. So maybe you break even a lot or something. I don't know. It depends on how your quality of your entry, right? But then you don't have the let your winners run. You're basically a binary trader now, right? The binary options kind of thing. So you could do 25.50. But now you're going to probably be in trades overnight unless you pick tops and bottoms like, you know, let's say the London Open. London Open is typically the bottom of the day or the top of the day. Oh, so yeah, a 25.50, faux show. New York, you might get it. You may not get it. And you may have to hold overnight, and things might change overnight, and that's your call. Or, right, how about a 150-300? You're like, 150? Drop your lot size, bro. See if you have what it takes to stay in a trade for three weeks. Now, that's probably not the right time of year to do that. But in late August, early September, it might be something that you are practicing. Set up monthly swings. Have 150 pips stop. You're like, 150 pips. Well, but let's see how close to the, the top or bottom you can place your trade as far as you analyze it. A trade that you're going to be in for, let's say, five weeks minimum. So you're like, that's a whole month. Yeah. Okay. So you analyze the market using your technical analysis, and you analyze where you think the bottom of that month is going to be. You probably have one or two or three options, right? But all of them within that 150 pips. So you really set up your trade properly as best as you possibly can. And a month later, when you hit your 300 pip profit, you go back and say, well, how close was I to being knocked out for a loss of 150 pips? How much risk did I actually take? How, how, what stop did I actually need? If you keep getting knocked out for minus 33 pips, you actually can't analyze how well your trades were set up in the context of the overall market because Right? You're like a mosquito on an elephant's butt. No, an elephant doesn't even re realize you're there. Right? Right? You're like, Deutsche Bank's not nervous about you. Oh, my God. Here comes Wayne. I think Wayne just entered the market. Everybody get out! <laughs> right? <laughs> Wayne's corner of the market. Right? It was the dupes. It was the dupes. Um, right? So... No, you, you're not affecting the market. You're not in the market. You don't even know where you fit in the context of the market because you've taken your loss or even your profit so quick that we don't even know if it was a decent trade, right? So what if you were able to do that where you're like, okay, I'm going to buy near the monthly M2 and I, I, my stop's 150 pips away from that, which puts us way below S2. Like for you to be wrong on that, you have to be redonkulously wrong. Fundamentally and technically, massive screw up. So have a small lot size. But what if you did that for the next six months, analyzing how you actually entered those trades, how well you entered those trades, what stop loss you actually needed on average? So you can say, well, this one I was within 50 pips, and this one I was within 60 pips, and this one I was in 40 pips. So on average, I need 50 pip stop. So you know, if I move my stop now from 150 to 75, but kept my limit at 300, now I'm doing 75 300 OCOs, four to one ratio. And you're like, oh, well, Wayne, it makes sense when you say it that way. And I'm like, I know, I know. Yeah? Too much logic this morning?
let's change this and see how it affects things. Let this go now to weekly. Hmm. Are traders using weekly pivot points on the euro dollar? Thank you, Mike. Mike, I appreciate that you get it. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, you should uh, you should read some books on uh, neuro linguistic programming. It's a very fascinating uh, subject. <clears throat> and you'll say, "Son of a gun! This guy's been brainwashing me for years." <laughs> Sorry, I have a good cult though. My cult is based on harmony. Yeah, well, a good teacher should be able to brainwash you, right? I mean, isn't that what education is? Right? You're supposed to walk in the room and say, that guy's really old. He's really old, so he has to be really smart because he's lived a long time. I'm like, dude, that guy was an idiot his whole life and now he's an old idiot i don't have to listen to that monkey head <laughs> right they're like wait you can't say that he's a professor you're a professor get a job bro you're not telling me that's how you the capital asset pricing model cap at cap m what do you that's what you teach you just teach that nonsense to children right I'm not, I'm generally not <laughs> the guy the professor likes. <laughs> yeah, it's true, right? All the drugs, all the druggies from the 60s and 70s are now respectable, you know, you know, college professors. I'm like, dude, you've never had a real job in your life and you've been protecting your sissy little job. It's all tenured, right? Anyways. Oh, yeah. The honey from the... Honey pot. All right. Anyways. Yeah. Traders are using these pivot points. But you see how I, I've broken them down today? I'll, I threw out a 20, or sorry, I threw out a 5A cross. And then I use some support and resistance, right? That's what this gray, these gray areas are, right? And I'm like, hey, man, technically speaking, do you, do you see this as, you know, Tradable? You're like, oh, that looks straightforward. And then when I say, well, what other things come into play? And I throw down weekly pivots. I throw down monthly pivots. And you're like, son of a, you know? And all of a sudden, <laughs> these, things, these things should be clicking like they're all related. Click, 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 right? But how about... How about that? How about the moving averages? Right? You could be buying those dips, right? Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, up, right? That's the, the thing is, do the thing you like. Okay, do the like. I don't care your technique. Wayne, what was the trigger? Uh, you wanted to buy it. That was the trigger. Yeah, it's a little better about the lights on. Is that a little better? No, I think I had it. It's not too bad if I did that one. Well, Pete, I wouldn't expect. Okay, so I don't know what's going to happen this month versus any other month. It can, it can do whatever it wants to. But if you had to, two choices, if you had a conservative target, right, a moderately aggressive target, and an aggressive target. So we'll do three. Or you have a conservative target, moderately conservative, or no, 
less conservative and not conservative. I don't know what you call it. So three levels of support, three levels of resistance. Okay. And you had to choose where you think we're going in June. I might say, all right, in June we're going to go here, or in June we're going to go here. If it was October, I'd say, okay, October we're going to go up here, or October we're going to go down here. July, I'm going to say, I think we're going to go more like here or more about there. Okay. But other than that, let's just like, I don't expect a lot to happen in July, for example, but it certainly could. All kinds of things could happen, right? But what, what's probable, what's realistic, what has happened in the past? Generally, less volume, less volatility. Okay. And then if we're not gonna if we're not gonna have a big bust out trending, you know, swing month, how how do we take care of that? Well, one of the things that I, I discuss a lot, or haven't recently, but in years past, last year, the year before, the year before, and the year before, and the year before, and the year before, I break things down into uh, wealth trading and income trading. Okay? Wealth, okay? There's a difference between wealthy people and rich people. You know the difference? What's the difference between wealthy and rich? Work. Yeah. So rich people have high income. They have a job. Okay. So I have an uncle who worked in the um, oil business. He, he started um, at the lowest of the totem pole, lived in a little trailer um, in the middle of a forest. There was some sort of oil rig he had to be near, right? So they fly in by helicopter. It's a trailer. And then there's like, I don't know, it would have been more than a pump jack, but there's something. And no joke, nothing for 300 miles except bears. 300 miles, like 300 miles from the nearest town, and there's no road to the town. Quite literally, like two or three trailers. One was the office, one was the sleeping quarters, and one was to put the bodies after you got attacked by a bear. So there's like three guys in the dead, in dead body trailer, right? But that's where he started. Right? Fast forward 30 years, he's vice president of the oil company, making, I don't know, $500,000 a year. Right? He's got Bugattis, he's got custom-made homes that are just ridiculous, you know, uh, custom made Mustangs and you know fancy this and fancy that and going on vacations everything's great right and one day they're like yeah oil prices are down um, you're fired <laughs> right do you remember that when oil prices fell they're like David you've been here for 35 years you worked your way up from the ground you're vice president thank you for your 33 years of service get the out and all of a sudden, you're like, your money is gone, right? You're like, what? But I make half a million dollars a year. Yeah, you're fired. And by the way, you're 60. Ain't nobody going to hire you. Right? Sorry. <laughs> uh, right? That If you need your job, even if you make 500000 a year, you're rich. But that rich can go away very quickly, right? Now, the other side of that, oops, I don't know why that was squiggly. Let's go back to the, the wealthy side. The wealthy is awesome. Because you don't have a job. You don't work. So how do you make money? Your money works for you. Well said. Yes, you own assets. <clears throat> right? Right? Poor people buy 65 inch 4K TVs on their credit card. 
<clears throat> rich people don't watch TV. Or sorry, wealthy people. I'm sorry, rich. I said poor people. Uh, well, yeah, I guess poor people do put it on their credit card. Rich people just buy it. And they're like, I need another TV. And wealthy people, they're like, TV's stupid. Why would I waste? I'm busy. I'm too busy for TV. But besides all that, how you waste your, um, you spend your waste time, um, your money works for you. What you, you know, you might be heavily in debt. How about that? Um, poor people are heavily in debt because they're putting everything on their credit card and they're not assets. They're just consuming by TVs. They don't go up in value. They're not an asset, right? Wealthy people are heavily in debt, but all they own is assets. Right, and the rich people they just buy stuff, and they just buy stuff. Well, we go to Disney. We love Disney. Twenty-five thousand dollar vacation, you know, uh, vacation membership at Disney with five thousand dollars in maintenance fees. I'm like five thousand dollars a year for maintenance fees? That buys you a lot of nights at Disney, right? But people do it. They're boom. Anyways, the focus is your money works for you right so you own you own five houses they go up 10 percent a year and you make five hundred thousand a year but you didn't get out of bed you didn't put on your pretty dress you didn't like throw an axe and a shovel and you just you own five houses, they went up 10%. You made $500,000 this year. You're like, oh, pretty good. And then they go up, right? So then what do you do? You take some of that 500,000 because it's more than enough to live and you buy two more houses. Next year you make 600,000. Year after that, you buy three more houses. Now you make a million dollars a year and you're like, this is freaking great, okay? It goes up and up and up. And you take all that cash and put it in the stock market. The stock market goes up. The housing market goes up. And you're, you're, you own all these assets. There might even be debt tied to it, but it doesn't matter. All right. So what I'm getting at is when I look at Forex, there's a time when I want to buy and hold. And I have no intention of getting out. What's your target? And I say... January. <laughs> right. Yeah, but James, I find that easy to understand. Okay? That's easy. If you if you know economics, you're like, that's easy. I mean the economic data is released, right? All the data is released, so it should be able to easily predict. Uh, the uh, tops uh, of uh, of markets. You know, the only scary thing that's happened probably in the last 50 years, I mean, there's been ups and downs in the stock market or in the uh, real estate market. But there's a difference between a recession and deleveraging. That was scary. When the whole world just got white of trillions of dollars, right? That is scary. But that is whole a part of a whole nother uh, scenario. Um, that's when you, you have ups and downs of economies, right? Boom, recession, boom, recession every seven years or something. Okay. But if you go back, so I studied a thousand years of economics. I, I know I'm retarded, right? But it's true. I studied a thousand years of economics. It's not even a joke. All right, so you have these seven-year cycles, and then you have like these 50-year cycles type stuff, right? Bigger cycles. So for most people, they're not thinking seven years ahead, right? Um, in fact, if I drew this, it's probably more like this. Okay. So we had the, right? Yeah, so, yeah, look at, uh, let me redraw this. This is actually interesting. And hopefully I finished my first point, okay? Okay, let's say that's 100 years, you know, just a small blip in history, okay? World War One to today, and you're going to see that there's, like, this stuff. 
And each one of these, okay, if you, let me change the color now, right? If, okay, each one of these things, if you're above the red line, your economy is booming, right? And if you're below the red line, your economy is in recession, okay? And this, you know, is, I don't know, it should be seven years. This doesn't add up time-wise, but I think you get the point. So this would be more like five years on this cycle. But I think it's closer to seven. So I'll mark this like from from here to here, seven years, let's say. I don't know. Okay. So you have booming economy, lower interest rates. Booming economy, right? And then lower your interest rates. Booming economy. That's actually the other way. You're down here, lower interest rates. Economy booms, raise interest rates. Economy collapses, lower interest rates. Economy, right? This is the central bank now. And then there's this and right this is kind of like the fed lowering interest rates to zero and it barely did anything there's a difference between this re these normal recessions and these are business cycles now otherwise like <laughs> business cycle right and then there's like this this okay and so what we went through is more like this. But these other business cycles are very easy to predict. Well, Mike, don't think of it that way. Okay? Don't think of it that way. Don't say, well, we're in year, you know, eight. So therefore, this is coming. Ask yourself, well, what creates the downtrend if we've been in an eight-year uptrend? Okay? What creates the business cycle? Well, for example, interest rates. Okay? If growth is 5%, let's say, let's say growth is 5%, but the interest rate is 7%. Okay? Can you see how that might affect a slowdown in the economy? But 5% growth is a lot, right? And so you have it. This is actually inflation, right? And that should be interest rate. Sorry. So, so inflation, in that case, inflation is high. But, okay, so when the economy is low, the interest rates are low, okay? And then inflation kicks in, right, as more boring and more money goes in into the real economy and then right inflation goes up interest rates go up and, and all of a sudden interest rates are higher than growth because of inflation and all that kind of stuff and the economy starts to cool off and comes down right so it's this well instead of looking at right so academics might say something like well we're in year eight therefore don't look at it as an academic look at it as an investor and say okay where are we in a typical cycle now okay are we here where you need emergency uh central bank action like lowering interest rates to zero is that where we are now <coughs> okay sorry <coughs> okay, so we're are we at the point where the Fed is done raising interest rates? Okay. So as an analyst of fundamental data or economic, it's actually economic data, okay? You believe we're somewhere between here and here, oops, on this cycle. Okay. And somewhere in here, you're going to have to have long run e economic growth. Okay. It's sort of a break even point. Are we at potential, full potential GDP? 
long run, we call this Y bar, Y being output on the long run in a perfect economy. Okay, so you have to ask, your, uh, ask yourself those questions. Are we there yet? <clears throat> Are interest rates so high relative to growth that the economy is going to just uh, grind to a screeching halt? We're talking the United States of America, Chuck. Okay, so some might argue we're actually somewhere between uh, this number and this number. Okay. We're still potentially below or at Y bar, but we're not at the point where, like, you know, the economy is going to collapse because it costs too much money to borrow. See, the, it, this business cycle flattens out when your shoe salesman, you own a shoe store, and you go to the bank and you say, I'd like to borrow some money to buy some inventory so that this fall, you know, when back to school happens, I have a, all the new cool Skechers. So I need a million dollars, and I need to order the Skechers today so that in September, my shelves are filled with shoes that moms are going to buy their kids. Got it? Cool. How much is that going to cost? Right now, 3%. So if you have a 6% margin, it's all good, right? You borrow a million bucks at 3%, buy a whole bunch of shoes, and then you sell all the shoes, and uh, you you pay for your loan and you right and now you pocket right three percent return as profit right and your shareholders love you your stock goes up same store sales are up right profits are up everyone loves you you're doing everything right you're the hot ceo but 2020 comes along, borrowing costs are now 5% because the Fed has continued to raise interest rates. Profit margins are the same. Right? Now your million dollars cost you 5%. And you're like, oh. But you're still profitable. And your same store sales are up and all the analysts are like, this guy's selling a ton of Skechers. Everything's awesome. Your stock goes up even more. Maybe not as much as it used to because they're like, oh, your profit margins are falling a little bit. And you're like, well, it's borrowing costs. And now 2021 comes along and the Fed, and people are saying, well, the Fed um, was too slow to react back in 2016. They were late. And now we have rampant inflation. And now borrowing costs are at seven percent. Okay, we're here. So you report in September. September sales were strong, but profit margins were were poor because of borrowing costs. Right. So you actually lost some money. And they're like, oh, but sales are okay, but the profits are down. So lay off a bunch of people. You got to get your costs lower. Get your costs lower. So you lay some people off because you want to show higher profits. And then Christmas comes along and you have lousy service. Right? And your borrowing costs are seven percent, so you you had, you had to buy more shoes at seven, maybe seven and a half percent, because interest rates went up again. And you, and you have less staff, dumber staff, right? We call that human capital and lower quality service. The staff you do have suck, right? So what happens? You have a lou lousy Christmas sales, and that gets reported on the next quarter. And what happens to your stock? 
takes two quarters, right? You have a miss here, and then you have another miss here, and it's a downward cycle, okay? That's how that works. And let's just say typically that could be seven to 10 years. But don't look at it like, oh, well, we're in year eight, so that's bad. Okay, that's what an academic might say. Now, if, if you have a real job and you're like a real world economist, you're looking at this because your firm is borrowing money to buy inventory and you're tracking cycles and costs and all this kind of stuff and you're actually making real decisions or you're an investor or trader like us and we're looking at that and say, well, I understand it was year eight, but after a deleveraging cycle, th this might take 15 years, not 10. And we're somewhere like maybe here, we're probably close to 50, and we're probably going to print for a 4.25 GDP for the second quarter. Okay, so that will probably then get us to Y bar and, and full employment. And so costs might start going up, and right? Because we know the Fed's going to continue raising interest rates and all this kind of stuff, right? right? And that will do this, and that will do that, and that will do this, and that will do that. But is that magic number 3% interest rates? Is it 4% interest rates? Is it 5% interest rates? What's the new normal? Thank you, Mike. Yes, it's awareness of events. Well, see, all this data is released, so you can do that and say, well, how are same-store sales? What are profit margins? What are the borrowing costs? What is GDP? What is GDP? The output of the economy or the income of the economy. Okay? Right? So are we near the end? No, I don't think so. But that's what we have to think about. That's what we have to discern ourselves. Okay? And then put those into smaller cycles, like can you be in the trade for a month? And what I was getting to is if you time things right and you have the, an you have the right analysis, therefore you can set a bias, during the summer, when you expect, let's go back to how I had it to tie this in. You have three targets. Not the far, furthest away or the, or the, have to do with how aggressive you are. The closer the target, the less aggressive you are. So if it's July and you don't think we're going to have much of a breakout, you should focus on income. If you can make 25 pips today, if you can make 50 pips today, great, take it. So now you're, you're trading, you still want longer term charts to analyze support and resistance, but you're taking 15 minute cycles, right? So typically if I trade on a 15 minute chart, I'm out within two or three. I'm gonna take 50 pips from this market, maybe only 25, and I'm done. I don't expect much, but I'm, I'm focused on income. Now, the, the, the downside to that is it's a lot of work. Okay. Yep. Well, you guys are trading CAD and you're getting paid, right? So, and I'm focused on just making money. Am I going to get wealthy doing this? No. But it, I'm just going to make some money. Okay. Typically, I don't advocate for that but this time of year I have less expectations for the market so hope is not a strategy so I'm not going to go for 300 pip moves I don't really expect them to happen so I'm going to take my conservative targets take money off the table put money in the pockets walk away Right, I'm not expecting big swings on the weeklies. I'm not expecting big uh, swings on the monthlies. That's cool, okay? But that I'm just earning a job, uh, earning income, wealth stuff. Okay, that's later. 
And instead of trading on a 15 minute chart, I'm probably setting trades up on a daily chart or a four hour. And I'm gonna be in for weeks, not hours. Okay, and the cool thing about that is, you know, I can, I wake up in the morning, I've made 300, so I might have five trades open, six trades open, 25 trades open, 100 trades open, but whatever, right? I've actually woken up, I'm like, I made 1,000 pips today, and it's not even 6 a.m. 1,000 for the day. And I'm like, it's 6 a.m. I'm more, well, well, move some stops, <laughs> go to bed, right? Um, but that is wealth because how did I make 1,000 pips in a day or 2,000 pips in a day? 2,000 pips in a day. How do you make that? Well, first of all, I have like 25 trades open or 40 trades open. 40. Yeah, it took me four or five weeks to build that. But if everything goes up 50 pips and I have 40 trades open, I made 2,000 bucks. Or, sorry, 2,000 bucks. 2,000 pips. And you're like, it's 9 and 6 a.m. Huh? I'm already up 2,000 pips. Well, that's, if you put yourself in that situation, that's where the wealth comes from, right? I didn't do anything. I didn't even add more trades. The market just went my direction, and 50 pips is nothing. What if it went up 150 pips? It's just like, boom. So, right, but that's where I'm analyzing the market, and I'm trying to be in trades for weeks and months. When I say weeks, I mean like 12 weeks. Now, the first ones, you know, right, I have a, I have a few that are from eight weeks ago and a few from six weeks ago and a few from four weeks ago and a few from two weeks ago and some from last week, right, kind of thing. So some might only be up 100 pips, but some might be up 400 pips, right, over the course of time. But it's a completely different trading strategy, and I'm, I'm expecting this and more, right, depending on my direction, right? And I, I'm not taking profit here, F that. I, I got to get paid. And I'm not taking profit here, F that. It's not enough. I expect more. In fact, what I'm expecting is this, and it goes up again, right? That kind of stuff. You see what I mean? And I'm focused on the wealth part where I'm building portfolios and letting them run. And I'll be damned if I pick a 30-pip profit on a trade. You're like, that's not going to be worth any real money unless I'm over leveraged, but I don't want to be over leveraged, right? And so that comes later in the year. So somebody asked me about something or something about over the summer. And I'm like, well, over the summer, you can shoot at rabbits, okay? While you're shooting at your rabbits, repair your traps, right? Sharpen your, um, your axe, right? Get a new bow. Practice some target shooting so that when September, September comes along, you're ready to go on a big hunt. Big game. We go on a hunt. Right? So use your time wisely this summer. No, I hate over leveraging. Wait till, uh, wait till you start getting stomach problems. You can't survive as a trader for 15, 20, 30 years trading like that. You just, you just, your brain goes, your stomach goes, your soul goes. It doesn't work. Okay. So I'm not going to see you for a month, guys. Uh, I think June 15th, or sorry, July 15th. So it's not quite a month, but three weeks. The coupon code at fxbootcamp.com is SUMMER999. It's capitalized. Okay. Okay. Can you email me a question? I can't promise you that I'll respond. 
I am moving out of my home for my wife and children for a month. I, I'm a little bit busy today. And then every day. Uh, but anyways, I'll try if I can, but I can't guarantee it. Okay. So that drops your cost way down. So that'll get you. I don't know. Does anyone know? Is it 40 hours of videos? 50 hours of videos? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, try it. Jean-Guy. I'll do my best. Yeah, it's more than 40 hours, right? So anyways, while I'm gone, if, if you use that coupon code, that drops by another $382 or something. So that makes it like 70% off or something. I have no idea, but it's way cheap. So you, while I'm gone, you can spend 40, 50 hours watching videos. And some people watch the videos two or three times, right? So you can spend a couple of hundred hours watching videos and, and sharpening your saw and repairing your nets and, and, and target practicing so that when we get back together, um, you're hot to go H-O-T-T-O-G-O -O -O on what to do this fall. Ideally, you're an expert in uh, fundamental analysis. Ideally, you're an expert in swing trading. Ideally, you're an expert in price action. Ideally, you're an expert in scalping. Ideally, you're an expert at that and more. I mean, it's all there. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, that. So yeah, so yeah. So I'll be back the probably the June fifteenth. I said it again, July fifteenth. Sorry. Okay, July sixteenth. That sounds good. You have to be gentle with it then, because I'll be uh, you know fresh off the boat. Yeah, Renee's got it. Cool. The Harbor Tide. Yeah, actually, I'm not in Winthrop. I'm in uh, Quincy. I'm in Quincy House. Yes, I'm the Quincy man. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for being a client to Trader's Way and stuff. I mean, it's really cool. I like, I like these webinars. I think we do good things. Veritas. I hope you feel, you know, we make the world a better place, you know, us, you and I together. I think it's good. This is good time. Yeah. Yeah, study hard. Yeah, well. I bought this one just to help. Okay. Okay. This is one class. I have two classes. It's a three week class, four hours a day of just being in class. And then I have to go to another class for four hours a day. And then there's like study and homework and exams and papers, and I have to read all this outside of my eight hours a day of the class, and then I have to write papers and take exams? Like, when the F am I going to have time for that? It's too hard. <laughs> Losers! They're, yeah, people are they're, they're saying my, 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 my program's too hard. <laughs> Bring it on, biatch. Yeah, bring it on. I'll sleep under my desk because that's what that's how. What do you mean too hard? Never heard of such a thing. Just makes the victory so much better. Oh, I have last year's going on. Um, yeah, problem is, so last year my dorm room had Japanese whiskey. And scotch whiskey. It had red wine. It had a humidor. 
uh, and I had I brought in a, um, a fridge with an ice maker so I could I can make ice for my scotch. A very typical college dorm room. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, only at Harvard. Yeah, yeah, Japanese whiskey. Yeah, it was good. It was nice. Yeah. So, anyways, I gotta go, guys. I miss you already. Um, see you. See you in a bit. Gotta do a stretch. See you in a bit. <laughs>